Okay, so what I'm just going to do is I'll bring up a presentation on screen to be able to share with you and uh, talk through with you. So just bear with me whilst I screen share that. Right, hopefully you can all see that okay. Could you just give me a thumbs up if you can see that? Lovely, thank you. So what I'm going to run through today with you is I'll just give you a little bit of an introduction as to who I am and uh, how I'm able to help it in this kind of sense. We're going to break down and dissect an application form for you. And my aim is going to just try and be to help you think of the these application forms in, they're usually, People look at them in a, like they can be quite complicated, but I want to try and help you break it down into the most pragmatic and easy way to approach it as possible so that you're almost at a point of um, ticking boxes as you go along and filling it out, which hopefully will make it, a, again, really, really simplify the process. And the way that we're going to break this down is into a stage one of the application form and a stage two of the application form. The stage one is what I'd like to consider the factual part of it, which is information around your, pers well, your personal information, such as your um, employment history, education, all that kind of stuff. Um, we're then going to talk about what the senior leaders of the schools that we work with uh, think is important within job applications. And I've got a good video for you of one of the clients that I work with, which will directly address you um, about what they think is important in a good application form. And then I'm going to go on to talking about uh, the letter, which is the part which most people find challenging when doing an application form. So uh, it's sometimes called different things with different application forms, but generally speaking, it's either the letter of application or the covering letter, essentially. So well, well that's what we're going to go through. And what I just want to mention to you before I start is what I'm trying to give you within this session is ideas um, and an element of kind of structure and ways that you can move forward um, so that you can try and get this done as effectively as possible. But add what I give you to your own views and opinions, because what, what I'm going to discuss with you is purely my own view and my own experience and the view of about six or seven head teachers and senior leader, leaders who I work with within Leicester schools. Um, but what makes a good application for me is reasonably subjective. And what one head teacher might really like, another head teacher might not like. So I'll try to give you as broad of an experience as possible with regards to what is seen as good. But obviously, do. It, if I say something that you might think, oh, actually, I might do that a slightly different way, that's absolutely fine. This is just here to try and try and help give you a structure and a framework, I suppose. So give you a bit of an idea as to who I am and why I'm, why I'm here today. Um, I work for a, a teaching agency called Now Education, and my job over the last nine years has, to be, has been to work with head teachers with Leicester secondary schools to help them recruit for permanent and temporary teaching staff. So I work with about 30 or so, and I've got some colleagues here within my team as well who work with about another 15 between them, secondary and special educational needs schools. And as a result, we're really heavily involved with the recruitment process within these schools and so we get involved with interviewing candidates with uh, with our client schools and we also look through a, a fair amount of application forms as well with them um, and our general aim as a company is to help schools fulfill these roles but from a from a teacher's perspective and from your side of it what our aim to do is for any person that registers with our agency is to try and offer them roles that they wouldn't normally see through their own methods and when I say your own methods usually most teachers will look at things like tests, e-teach, I'm sure that their names of job boards that probably ring bells to you um, but we tend to receive quite a lot of vacancies that don't get advertised on those mediums for, for various reasons and whether they be schools that are wanting to overstaff departments and therefore if they find someone good they'll take them on but don't necessarily advertise for that role because of the cost associated with that 
um, or if a long-term contract becomes available very last minute, the schools don't have time to advertise itself, they'll come to somewhere like ourselves. So that's essentially what we provide. And if you are interested in knowing more about that and seeing if we can help you out in the new academic year, when it comes time for you to look for a new role, just get in touch with me after and I'll, I'll leave you my details to have a discussion with you about that at another time. Um, I suppose before I do dive into it, if you've got any questions, please feel free to, you know, pop your, your hand up part way through, or if you want to save them until the end, I've got a little question section uh, and, and time allowance for that at the end. So do feel, please do feel free to store any questions you, you've got and ask them. So we'll move on to the first part of it, which is we're, we're going to break down the application form and just try and make it as nice and simple as we can do. So we're going to separate it into two parts. The facts is the first part, and the second stage is what I like to call the narrative. And stage one, the factual part, is all this snapshot of what I've got here is things like personal information, details of your current job. And what we're trying to think about in this stage is why, why would a head teacher need this information? And what usually happens and what most of the clients that I spoke to in the run up to this said is this factual part to start with is all about actually reducing the number of applications that they go on to read the covering letter of. So if you can imagine uh, a maths teaching job, which is advertised, for example, and they might get 15 applications that come through they are going to look for some real key things in this factual section before they even start to go and look at the narrative section, which is the letter of application. And what they're trying to do is just reduce the numbers, basically, down to maybe five or six that they might want to read the applications for and take through to the next stage. So what this first stage is all about is not giving them any reason to dismiss your application basically and trying to make everything as nice and easy and concise and accurate as you can do. The head teachers and SLT that I spoke to and asked about this said that they on average spend about 30 seconds scanning over this part of the application form. So the simpler you can keep the details about your present appointment, your personal information, your employment history, that the simpler you can keep that and the more easy to follow, the better. Because as I said, they're gonna spend very limited time on that. What they're also looking for is, do you have eligibility to work in the UK? Uh, do you have the relevant education for the role that they are applying for? So if you are applying for a maths teacher role, do you have a degree in that subject or if you don't have a degree some kind of subject knowledge enhancement and those kind of things so it's as i say it's a very quick scan over what your current circumstances are so what you're trying to do in this section is just make it nice and easy for them to progress your application so that they then go and actually look at your letter of application so the things that you want to try and do is Keep your font size to between 11 and 12. Keep professional text. I spoke to quite a few head teachers who said they said all sorts of wacky and wonderful text that people have used in almost a bit of a bid to stand out, but that unfortunately doesn't achieve that. So just keep it as simple as you possibly can. They're also looking for spelling errors in this part, just as much as they are in the actual letter of application itself. Um, and they're also looking for people to include all the relevant information that they can. And I'll touch upon something that I've just mentioned on the last slide is there's plenty of people who might have a degree in a specific subject area, but actually might want to go on to teach something else. So somebody registered with me last week who has a criminology degree and they are currently a trainee teacher in maths. And so what that person did in between is a subject knowledge enhancement course in order to bring themselves up to speed um, with the maths curriculum and so those are the kind of things that you need to try and ensure that you do include within your education section because it's something that a lot of people tend to, to miss out because it's not necessarily as formal as something like a levels or a degree or your pgce um, but it's really really crucial again if you think with the mindset that 
a head teacher or senior leader is looking at this with the view of trying to dwindle these applications down, if they look at your degree and see that it's not related to the subject that you're teaching, but there's also very little experience of the subject that you're teaching or no subject knowledge enhancement coupled with that, you could argue that that's a reasonably easy excuse for them to put your application to one side. So try and include all relevant ed information and education around that. Um, we also suggest covering gaps in employment as well. Usually you should be able to, you can see here that there's usually on most application forms, a little area where you can explain any gaps in employment or education. Um, but if there isn't that on the specific application form that you're filling out, make sure you make a note of, of that and that it's something you address within your covering letter then and when you apply. What you essentially don't want to do is leave any stone unturned and if there's anything that you think, oh no, I'm a little bit worried about this or I hope that they don't pick this up, don't hope that they won't notice it, just address it and just, just deal with it within the letter. And one of the final tips for, uh, for stage one is to include information around your teaching placements in the previous teaching post section. Uh, so many people don't do this because understandably they think that this is about paid teaching positions. And if you're a trainee, you would assume that you wouldn't put it in there because it's not a paid teaching role. But all the head teachers and SLT that I spoke to in the run up to this said they would like to see people's placements within this previous teaching post section, because ultimately, albeit not paid work, it is teaching experience. And it gives you the chance again to really just show your experience um, and what you've been doing and where you've been teaching. And again, just it, it's giving them no reason to not want to progress your your application. So. Those are some of the top tips for, for, I suppose, the stage one part of it. Before we move on to the letter of application itself, I've spoken to one of my clients that I work very closely with, and they put a bit of a video together for you for a few minutes, which tells you what's important to them. So it's not, not just me speaking to you. But before we go into that, has anybody got any questions that wanted to ask on that first part of the application form? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, Lewis. You know what you've just touched upon. So I'm looking at an application form and it says, um, trying to remember it, it's about your current employer or where you're employed. And I've done exactly what you've said not to do is I've, I've actually put my previous role, I think, but should I put my school, the school that I'm in at my play in my placement, because I disregarded that as actually work even though I am yeah I, I would say so because it well a couple of things each application form is different I suppose so you've got to just be careful on the wording so if they're very specific and it says paid employment then you've done the right thing and, and not included it so you'd need to be careful around it, the wording of your specific application form that you're completing and okay. um, but there's certainly no harm in it because it is teaching experience at the end of the yeah. day and you can assume that a head teacher is going to look at your C, uh, sorry, your letter of application, and they're going to see that you are a skit student. So they are going to know that you have, have completed placements previously. But I think the best way to always look at these application forms is, whilst not every school is in the luxurious position of having 20, 30 applicants for every role that they have, you need to assume that they might. And you are just really minimizing any chance that they might put your application to one side. So yeah, absolutely, for your, for your current employment, feel free to put that it's your current placement school. And then for your previous employment before that, put your other placement. You'll just need to make it clear on the application form that that is a placement, and so they don't confuse it with paid employment. Um, so as long as you make it clear on the application form, yes, I, I'd suggest doing that, but it won't be the end of the world if you haven't, because if everything else is reasonably concise and clear, you should still get through to the covering letter part. And then uh, quite often that's where you would then speak about that further. Okay, thank you. That's all right, no worries. Anybody else want to ask anything before we move on? No, okay, lovely, I'll crack on. So 
as, a, as I mentioned, one of the um, clients that I work with is Gartree High School in OB, and I provide um, teaching staff to that school on both permanent and, and temporary roles. So their assistant head teacher has given me a little bit of a breakdown to, to give to yourselves about what's important to them. Just, I suppose, for the sake of variety as well, to save you listening to me for the whole way through. So I'm just going to pop this video on now. Hopefully I'll have to stop sharing the presentation and share this. If anybody can't see it for any reason, just wave your hand so I know that there's a problem, okay. Okay, I'm hoping is that switched on to a YouTube video for you? Yeah, lovely, okay. I can't hear very well. I don't know about the rest. But... Yeah, it's quite quiet. Okay, I'll just pause that and pop it on to full volume for you. Is that any better? No. Really hmm. Okay, that's on full volume on on mine. What I can do after, if you want, is it, is it quiet to the point that you can't hear it? Yeah, we can't make it out. I don't know if it's catching up. It's quite slurry, so you can't really make out the words. Okay. Put it, sometimes we've had things on the chat box and then we can go to it later or if you just put it on an email to us and then we can go to it later. That's fine. I've got your, um, I will send your email addresses in case there's any problems in the run up to this. So what I'll do after is I will um, drop the link to this uh, afterwards. It's about, it's a five minute video of Ed, the chap who you can currently see with his eyes closed on the screenshot, um, telling you about what makes a really good uh, application form. And Ed um, deals with all the NQT mentoring at the school um, and does a lot of the uh, sifting through application forms from all teachers who apply there. So as I say, I'll, I'll send you the video through to your email afterwards and do take five minutes to have a look at it. It's got some really, really useful information on there. So I'll stop sharing that and I'll move back to the, the presentation. So, creating a good application. So this is the part, generally speaking, that everybody hates uh, doing because it's the most uncomfortable part. Um, and it, I can understand why, because a lot of people find it difficult to talk about themselves and to sell themselves and say why they would be great. But there's also an element of this, which I think it's really important to start thinking about embracing because everything else that you've filled out in the application form to this point is just factual information. This gives you the time to talk about why you think you would be a good teacher for that school and that job. So it really is your opportunity to shine. Um, but what we're going to do is again, try and make this as simple and pragmatic a, as we can for you. And so this stage two of creating a good application letter, I've just broken it down into four parts for you. And we're going to cover the um, why is why this school, why this job and why you sections of this. Obviously, it's very difficult for me to advise how you structure an introduction to you and yourself, because that's very, very personal. But quite a lot of people would start their letter of application with something like, uh, dear head teacher, thank you very much for the opportunity to apply for this role at X school and then do a little bit of information about themselves. Um, but, but again, that, that's something that you, I suppose, need to personalise a little bit. But what we're going to do is break down sections two, three and four to give you a really good idea of what to include. Now, these are four areas which you really should include in the letter of application, but they're not the only four parts to cover. So there's other areas that you want to include in there, 
absolutely please do but th these are four areas that should be in there as a bit of a minimum really and before you start writing something which is really helpful to you uh, and will probably help dictate the tone of your um, letter of application is to try and just put yourself in that head teacher or SLT members mindset and trying to put yourself in the, their seat whilst doing your application so you're not just talking about what you've done and what you've experienced but putting yourself in their shoes to think right what does that head teacher or senior leader want to see from me and how can I help them get results because every school leader ultimately wants to employ a good teacher that's going to help them get good results and so part of your application process is about evidencing how you can do that so having that mindset of I need to show show them what they want to hear it is really really important and head teachers and senior leaders they love their schools they spend so much time on trying to make it the best place possible um, because they believe in giving their students the best experience the the tone of your application letter needs to be about supporting that and supporting the head teacher to achieve what they're trying to achieve and so before we go into the breakdown there's just some some absolute essentials that we need to do um, throughout the letter of application so ed mentions it in the video which i'll send you after but addressing it to the head teacher is absolutely crucial keeping your font spelling and grammar nice and consistent um same as with your essentially the same size and same font as you did with the stage one of the application keep that clear and and uh theme throughout make sure you're using paragraphs to clearly distinguish your different contents and um helping to break up your application form so it's nice and easily identifiable to the reader what you are talking about within each paragraph being careful not to copy and paste and one of the head teachers that i spoke to said that she re has read numerous applications with more than one school name referenced in the letter of application um, she said the worst one she's seen three different school names within there now i certainly understand that application forms are lengthy lengthy processes they're not the they, they're time consuming so copying and pasting certain parts of it is understandable but it has to be tailored and bespoke so if you are going to copy and paste please just be really really careful uh, about what you're copying and pasting and if you change school names and all that kind of thing accordingly uh, you may well find that there are guidance notes as well with the um, application pack so one of my clients sent me an application pack for me to have a really good look through before I presented this and they have guidance notes that they give to people about how to fill out their application letter. If that is there, please utilize it and use it because they're basically telling you what rules to follow. Uh, Ed again mentions this in the video that I'll send to you after um, but no more than two sides for a covering letter. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to make it two sides. There are very, very good covering letters or, or letters of application, which are one side or a side and a half, that cert certainly no more than, than two sides, really. And as of I, I have a question here. So the letter of application is basically the cover, the cover letter that you send apart from the personal statement, right? So usually on most application forms, you will have that first stage that uh, I've referenced previously, which is your education, your employment history and all that kind of stuff. And then usually they will have a letter of application section or, or, or a personal statement. They usually leave like two sides for that. Sometimes people will want to send a separate covering letter, separate from the application form if you want to. And that covering letter, is more about you drawing on areas that you haven't quite been able to put within your letter of application 
or things that you want to expand on further. You might want to draw from the two, but this is uh, referencing the part that's included within the application form. The one that is a personal you, statement of yeah, some people. Personal statement, letter of application, that, that, okay. that, that kind of part that comes with the second stage. So of you it. should still address it even though it's personal, because I, I don't know Absolutely. why I had in mind the one you address is a cover letter and then the personal application is just you write on it, but... Yeah, it's still, yeah. still, still, yeah, it's still addressing it to the, okay. uh, the head teacher. May I have a question, please? Yeah. Sorry, I mean, in terms of... Uh, priorities mm -hmm. make it easier to for them to to don't disqualify you yeah the personal statement will have more weight than than a cover letter because it seems that for default all the applications that have been filling in they ask you for a personal statement inside the application mm -hmm. and together with it they ask you for the cover letter so within the applications that you've done you know the personal statement that you've put in that uh, they're leaving your room for and bear in mind, diff different applications for different schools do change. Yeah. Um, but have is it something whereby they've left you kind of an A4, maybe two A4 pages for you to put the personal statement in? Is that the kind of thing that you're referencing? Yes, they're talking about probably about a page that you can write in there. Yeah. So, so what I was doing sometimes, if I couldn't fit in something in the personal statement, I used to put in the cover letter. That's exactly it, yeah. So, but, but again, uh, which one they're going to read first, which one they're going to read more. Uh, I don't know which, how to weigh that. Yeah, so that's something that's going to be very personal to each head teacher. You, you can be near enough certain that they're all certainly going to do that stage one that we spoke about as the first thing that they read, because what they're going to look at there is if someone doesn't have the appropriate qualifications, eligibility to work in the UK, etc., they're not even progressing down to this stage. What, I, what my suggestion would be based on a few of the conversations that I've had, and again, I can't say this is the case for every school because head teachers will do it differently, but usually the letter of application or personal statement, as it may be called in some of the application forms, that's part of the core application that, that they're requesting. A covering letter can often be optional. Um, I'd always suggest if they do say that you can send a covering letter, absolutely send one with it. Um, but the, in my experience and opinion, that personal statement or letter of application, which is contained within the main application form, is they would place more emphasis on that than in a covering letter. So it's more like a stage two? Yeah, yeah it, it's, it, if they've only left you room for one page within the personal statement or the letter of application, then you you've got plenty of scope there to draw much more information out of that within the covering letter and as we go through and break down these stages of the the letter of application what you will probably want to do is if you've only been given one page just pull on literally one or two notes around uh, each point and then as you go into the covering letter you can expand on those further um, but, I, but I would say your letter of application, which is contained within the main application form, it is a, a, the more key area than the covering letter, in, in my personal opinion. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sorry, can I just double check that? Yeah. I, I got confused about the personal statement and covering letter. And if you're going through an agency like eTeach, you've got, they give, sometimes you're given 800 words. So would you then put your covering letter in that and then your personal statement? Is it all in there? So I haven't seen an advert through eTeach, to be honest. So sorry, just okay. explain explain that structure again for me. Normally, you'll get, um, sometimes the school literally will, you just get an application form to fill in. And you know the stage two that you're talking about, the letter of application? Yeah. You've, you've literally got, it's a box and you can write your, personal statement in there yeah um, it's all the details and your background mm -hmm. so would you then because there's no other place to actually add on or there's nothing separate to say a covering letter so would your covering letter go in to that actual um, whole space it's a bit I'm a bit confused 
there isn't a separate area where you can put a covering letter. Would you send that to the school separately? Yeah, so if you've got no space for it, send it separately. So if I, what I'll try and pull up for you, but just bear with me one second. I've stopped screen sharing that. So let me just grab an example letter of application and you can use it. I'll try and show that to you as, um, as something we can reference because it seems to be it, the, part of the problem is that there are a lot of different phrases and people structure the application forms very, very differently. And yeah. a lot of schools actually use a lot of these phrases verging on interchangeably. Um, so let, let me just grab an application form that was sent by one of my clients and I'll, I'll run through that as a bit of a, an example uh, with you. Thank you. Okay. Right. So this one here is from, so I work with a school called New College Leicester over in Glenfield. And this was an application form, um, a genuine application form for a teacher of maths that they've recently been advertising. So as you can see, there's the part one here, which is all the, the personal information which we've discussed, which is that almost tick box exercise where they have a quick, quick scan over. And then on their, on their application forms, you do your referee information. There's some notes and guidance around the application form there, some data protection information, some equal opportunity stuff here. And then this is where it says, please insert your covering letter at the end here. And this is this that the covering letter there in that context is the same as the letter of application. So you're, you're covering the same thing there. Um, if, the, if an application form is set out where it's got a personal statement box and that personal statement is room for a couple of paragraphs or something like that, which I know some application forms do have, you're aiming in that personal statement section to really just cover, uh, it's so, so difficult, but a very small amount about you and something that's gonna make the, the head teacher say, you know something about this job and this school. So th those are some of the things that you're just trying to really just get a little bite out of, again, just to see if you can get past that stage. But then when you're moving towards this covering letter or letter of application, uh, again, as it can be called, that's when you're looking to really expand and draw out more on that. Um, but as you can see, the way this set is set out is probably quite different to some of the other application forms that you've probably looked at as well, isn't it, I'd imagine? Yeah, very different. Yeah. It's like you say, they just um, do vary. Yeah, they vary quite a bit. And as I say, it can be quite challenging because some of it's optional, some of it's mandatory, some of, the, some of the words are used almost interchangeably with each other. So you, you'll have to judge the situation based on, on the context of that actual application form. But I suppose if I was to give you a rule of thumb, if it's a small section for personal statement, it's mainly about you. Well, it's a personal statement, so it's mainly about you, but you're going to want to say one or two things that are gonna capture their attention to show it's not just copied and pasted from the last one that you applied for so something about that school and something about that job would be really important Th this letter this application form doesn't have a personal statement part of it it just goes straight into personal details and covering letter so here you would use that covering letter or letter of application kind of interchangeably and then if you did want to pair something with that um which is i suppose your more traditional covering letter which is separate to the application form you could put uh, you know, put that as a, a letter which has been wrote to the head teacher about the role, which draws on more information than what you're going to include in the one side of A4 that's available here for you to write. Okay. Thank you. 
does that clarify that a little bit? I know it can be a bit a bit grey yeah. and a bit murky that area is, but it's as I say, all, all changes with different forms really, and do, what, the way different schools want to set out their applications. So is um, the personal statement the same thing as a covering letter? I know they'll have different things in them, but in different application forms, is that what they are asking for, or does it vary? It depends on the amount of space that they're giving okay. you as well for it, to be honest with you. So if you were to see a section on a personal statement and that personal statement section was two pages long and then there wasn't room for a covering letter to attach to it, you'd include everything within that personal statement. But if they've just got, as I say, uh, usually they will, they're going to put a, might put a box for a personal statement whereby you've only got X amount of room to fill that. And then you've got to do your letter of application separately. So having a look at how they've laid out the form before you start putting all the information in is going to be really important. OK. Thank you. That's all right, no worries. Uh, right, let me just switch back over to the presentation. Thank you for sharing the application. It was very useful. No, no problem. And, and hopefully that just shows a little bit as well, more than anything, how different they all are and there isn't necessarily a, and I, I think to be fair this is where a lot of people find them challenging is because they do differ quite a lot between between each school and between each role um but no no, no problem you're welcome okay so we were touching on the basics around this letter of application or, or, or covering letter and uh, I've just been mentioning about how just please make sure that it's tailored and, and not generic. And if you are at a point where if you're at a point where you're wondering whether to apply for a job or not, and you're almost copying and pasting everything from a previous letter in a bid to, to try and get it in, and you haven't got the time to research the school and all that kind of stuff, I'd arguably say don't spend your time applying for the role. Put your energy into applying for fewer roles but doing it really, really thoroughly because if every head teacher and SLT member of staff that I spoke to when I said to them, what's the most important thing to you? They said that they apply to my school, not, not a school for a job, my school for this job. And so if you, you haven't got the time or the chance to do that research to get that information in there, you're almost best off not spending your time doing it and to put that energy and effort into one maybe that's coming up a bit further in the future that you have got the time to, to do that for. Um, and so as I mentioned, what, what we're going to try and do now is break down the why this school, why this job and why you part of the letter of application so that you can really approach them in a very pragmatic and almost research led way. And in your why this school section, you really need to be able to tell the head teacher why you want to work in that specific school. And as I mentioned previously, a head teacher loves their school. And in this section, we really want to be showing that we can recognize why they would love their school and what they think is great about it um, and what strikes a chord with you about their school. Now, there's some key areas of research that we can do here in order to mould our, uh, our information that we're going to put in here. And there's lots of information usually in an application pack that um, you can find out about, about the school. And there's lots of information, of course, on a school website as well. And some things to maybe consider is the school's results. Is there any information around their department? And usually within an application pack, there is information around the um, actual department that you are reply, applying to work within. Do you know much about their reputation? If you are maybe local to the area, have you been able to research their values and their goals? So these are the kind of things that you want to research before you even really make a start on, on writing things and familiarize yourself with it so you can use these as themes throughout covering why you're applying to that school. And if I give an example here, this is off New College Leicester, which is the school where I showed you the application form uh, a second ago. I went onto their website and, and picked this off to use an ex as an example for you as to how you can 
look at some information on there and take some key parts and use that to shape what what you're going to say about why you want to work in that particular school and this is just a few lines off, off their, I think it's their homepage, if I remember rightly off the top of my head, but what you can see there is that they're looking to provide a rounded and inspirational education. Some of the other parts highlighted is that they want to instill the four R's, which is respect, responsibility, resilience, and resourcefulness. They also make some references about developing students' confidence and responsibilities, and then further go on to speak about um, that the success of a student isn't just measured through exam results and outcomes, but by um, leading a healthy and fulfilling lifestyle uh, and being mentally and physically health literate. So here you could kind of start to see that this school places a lot of value on more than just the qualifications that their students achieve and that they're looking to instill life values into these students so having read that that would be a really key thing that you would want to discuss within your um, application that this school clearly places high values on that and why that is also important to you as as a teacher and whilst we do go into this and whilst we delve into this and i'm going to talk a, a little bit more about this in due course with the other sections but instead of just saying what resonates with you you must explain why it resonates with you and the number one thing that the head teachers and slt said that they found they found challenging to progress people's applications with was when they're reading it people will say i want to work at this school because i've seen that you do this and that's great that the research has been done but they need to know why they need to know why that is important to you um, why does that strike a chord with you? And you're almost better to select a small number of, of key points from the website or, or the application pack, um, but really go into why they inspire you and why, why that is important to you and therefore why you want to apply to that specific school. The next part you're going to you want to cover within this is why that particular job. And why this particular job is almost a bit of a bridging point between why you want to work at the school and why you it's talking about why you wanted to become a teacher of your subject um, and you want to combine that with areas that you know about the school and something we're going to start to talk about quite a bit now within this section and the next section is impact statements and providing evidence to support the statements that you talk about and an impact statement is it's basically filled with evidence so it's i tried x or sorry i thought x i tried y and z was the outcome so it's it, it's really giving evidence and support to what you are talking about particularly with regards to why you wanted to become a teacher and if, I, if i'm to give you i suppose a, a bit of an example on on this some of the areas that you would probably cover within why you want to apply for this job is when you became interested in teaching your subject and one of the things that uh, quite a few of the head teachers pointed out to me was here is where really strong language and examples of evidence and things like that is so important so one of the things they say they always read is that someone has a passion for science for example if they're a science teacher and that is great to know that as a, as a teacher of science you have a passion for science but what would be such a stronger way to term that was would be something like when did you start to develop your fascination for science because Someone says, I've always had a passion for science. Well, we haven't always had a passion for science. So there was a, a point at which that started to intrigue you. And when did that start to intrigue you? And how did you then build on this to develop enough interest to want to become a teacher? And how has this shaped your educational choices? So Hopefully you can see there was a bit of an example we've moved from, I have a passion for teaching my subject to some real in-depth 
information around when you became interested in it, what you've done since then, and how that's led you to where you are now. And it's just so much more specific and concise and, and strong in its language. And continuing on with this, some of the things you might want to include as to, to why this job and why you want to be a, a teacher within your subject is, do show things that evidence your commitment and drive to pass the knowledge that you have onto the next generation. Uh, and why do you think that's important? Why do you think it's important that your subject is known by, by the next generation? Although that's something which will be really useful to include in there. And you've got an opportunity here to discuss your expertise within your subject area and why your expertise is important to being an excellent teacher, maybe link it to something about the school. So I suppose if, if I was to give you an example, if I suppose I'll give you two, two examples, actually. If you have a first class degree in maths, for example, and you see that the results of the school that you're applying to, of those that achieve top, top grade within maths is good or on the other side of it low. You could say that your first class with your first class degree in great subject knowledge, you may want to help push those results, whatever the percentage is, even higher. And that shows that you are drawing on your expert subject knowledge and you're drawing on research that you've done with the school to show why you want to teach. On the other side of it, you might have a degree in an unrelated subject area, such as a psychology degree, for example, and you've done a subject knowledge enhancement to become a maths teacher. You could talk there about how you have recognised that maths is such a crucial uh, part of young people's lives and you've noticed it later on and as a result have done a conversion course to want to become a maths teacher. So now you feel it's really important to try and get those maths skills to pupils at a much younger age than maybe what you did. So you can see there again, you're drawing on your personal experiences about why you want to become a teacher and applying it to, to the school. And another part that a few head teachers mentioned was, can you link uh, the job in this school, maybe to research elements of your teacher training. Um, so are there areas that this school are saying are important to them, which fall in line with your research that you've had to do as well? And the final part that we're going to move on to now is why you? Uh, and and why, why should that school select you to come to interview? And this is the part I think that people probably find the hardest because, again, it's talking about themselves and basically what you bring to the table. And this section, again, is where impact statements and evidence are probably the most important part throughout the whole application letter. Because when you talk about yourself, it can be very easy to just say, I feel this or I believe this, whereas what they actually want to see is I did this, I have evidenced this and I can show this and I have a track record of doing this. So if I'm employed by your school, I can continue to do this and build on it, if that makes sense. But before you do dive into talking about what is great about you and what you can bring to the role, we can take a step back again and look at it in this pragmatic kind of view and look at it from a research-based perspective. So you've got to tell this school what's great about you. But before we do that, let's have a look at what the school actually wants from somebody that's applying. And then let's take what we know is good about ourselves and apply it to what they are actually telling us that they want. So in your job application pack that you usually receive from a school or, or if you've applied through eTeach, I haven't seen how the application process looks on that, but I would imagine there's some kind of application pack that usually comes with that. Um, usually included is a person specification. And I'll run into it in a minute, but a person specification is your best friend when you're talking about why you as a person. Um, there is quite often a letter to the applicant as well, which is within the application pack, which again can talk about some areas about what the school is looking for, what the department are looking for and that kind of thing. And once we've looked at that, piecing together 
your written part about why you is just about evidencing around what they're looking for. So let's use an example. This again is the person specification that came with um, the New College Leicester job application form that I showed you earlier on. And so here, when it comes to the part of your letter of application where you want to talk about you and what you bring to the role, if you're wondering where to start, this document tells you everything that they are looking for in a person. And it even goes as far as to tell you what's absolutely essential, i.e. you may not make it to interview if you can't demonstrate this, and what is desirable. So not essential, but, but is nice uh, to have. And this is something which is just so, so important to use. And what you want to maybe do is use this as your criteria that you start to build your why me section about. Um, and you can use and reference classroom experiences for this, show about your reflective practice, maybe even include feedback from a mentor to, to discuss why you fulfill these essential and desirable traits. And this is all, this is essentially your tick list, if I'm being honest with you. I, I spoke to two head teachers who said they literally sit there with this person specification, read somebody's letter of application and tick it as they go through. So when they see that trait, yes, 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 no. And then they look to see how many gaps they have at the end. And so you can use it as your, as your tick list. You know, when you finish writing that letter of application, if you can read it and you can tick off near enough everything in there, what you've done is what we're aiming to do is not give them a reason to not progress your application. So if you have completely fulfilled that person specification by addressing intellectually and demonstrating those key criteria, you absolutely can't go wrong. So that, that's a really good starting point to building the information around why you as an individual. And the final key point on, on the why you section is you need to think about what else you can bring to the role that's outside of the person specification. And think extracurricular here, but do your research. So if one of the things that you would love to do is to be able to you know, set up a chess club, for example, that, that's fantastic that you want to do something outside of the, of the classroom. But if they've already got that, how much use is it to them? How much is it going to make you stand out? So do a little bit of research. And if you're going to talk about wanting to set something up in an extracurricular aspect, try by having a look around on the website, maybe, or, or even putting in a phone call to the receptionist beforehand and saying, do, do you run this club um, already? to see if they already bring it. And if they do already have it, but you want to be a part of that and enhance it further, then maybe acknowledge that. Um, but again, by doing your research to see if it's there or not will help you help you um, dictate how you write that. And two of the SLT people that I, uh, I spoke to in the run up to this all said that they felt like a lot of teachers in recent years have been applying for the roles in the classroom but haven't been interested in extracurricular stuff and it's something that's really 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 important to them so yeah i would really suggest covering that having a look at your language as well it is going to be really really crucial and what schools class as weak language is things like i hope to or i will try to and things of that nature and what you want to try to replace it with is almost intention statements. So I intend to, I'm confident that I will. Something that shows resolve and it will change the tone of your entire application um, form. And it's talking with much more confidence, which is what they're going to want to see. Another really good tip that you can use is when it comes to references, you don't really, your uh, schools that you're applying for don't really apply for references until they're much further down the line. So you might have some outstanding feedback from a mentor um, or a, a referee from one of your placements and 
They might have brilliant things to say about you, but the school aren't going to see any of that because they don't apply for this till further down the line. So if you've got some quotes that your mentor has given you or feedback that your mentor is giving you that you know if they were asked whether that happened in a reference that they would you know verify you feel free to use it feel free to say my feedback within my lesson from my mentor was this and that and the other and it shows this which is in line with one x value of the school or whatever it might be and hopefully you can see now where we're trying to piece all, all these pieces together um and that is almost like giving a school a snippet of what your references are going to be like before they've even applied for your references. And it gives some third party uh, validation to what you're saying rather than just you saying it yourself. So just like I tried to include that video, which I'll send you after it in, I suppose, a way for that shows a school is validating and saying a very similar thing to what I am saying within this process. Um, you using feedback is using a third party to to reinforce what you are saying about yourself as well and it's, very, it's something that comes across very powerfully and the final key point i think is putting yourself stepping back and having to think about the larger picture so in every teaching appointment the head teacher is looking for someone that's going to help them on that school's journey that head teacher is hopeful that you're going to be there for a long time and you're going to help them get to where they need to go. So try to evidence that you've got the skills to be a part of it. And again, don't just say that you're passionate about it, evidence it and show how you've done it before. Recognize the direction they're trying to go and try and link what you're saying about yourself with that. OK. I know we've had a few questions throughout, but that, that's the final bit on the in the why me part. Um, has anybody got, anyone got any questions that they wanted to ask or follow up on? I have one question. Yeah. Um, I'm currently applying for a school that I used to work in for okay. two years. So can I talk about my experience in the school? Because I know someone else has done something similar. As they said, I didn't mention anything that I did in the school, but I don't know, I want to talk about when I was there. <laughs> you 100% should, in my opinion, because okay. if, you, if you don't, you've basically got to take out two years of school based experience, yep. which, <laughs> which as a trainee teacher, you know, with the greatest respect to every trainee teacher, we're not really blessed with enough experience to be able to say, let's take two years out uh, of your of your teaching experience. So you're going to want to include that. And I'm sure that you got to know loads about the school in that time and the students uh, and the, the pupil demographic and the vibe of the school and all that kind of thing. So yeah, 100%, yeah, including. Okay, thank you. Um, is that the same for if you actually went to the school as well? So I don't know if you can see me. Uh, I can't see you, but I can hear you. So that, that, that's, uh, that's <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can see you now, Meg. Oh, oh. oh, you've got to go. You are. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've been to that school, absolutely. Yeah. And it will, was it out of interest? Was the head teacher the same head teacher that it has now? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't quite catch up. Was that, did you say yes? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. They will love that because remember, a head teacher is wildly, wildly passionate about their school. And for you to have gone there and enjoyed your experience enough to want to come back and give the students exactly, hopefully the same experience that you received, they will absolutely love it. So 100% talk about your experience there and, you know, why that has made you want to apply and come and come back to the school. Okay, Fab, thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, we've got no, if we have no other questions, then um, we'll, we'll round that up for today. My contact details are here on, on the screen and I will, you'll also get my contact details actually because I'm going to email that video through to you uh, afterwards. So what my aim for everybody 
is, is to try and offer as much information as I can. And I've, there's a few other people on the skit course who I've spoken to previous to, to this, um, who, who you're welcome. Oh, thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, who have got in touch with me and said, this is my application letter. Could you have a quick read through it? And, you know, if, if that's the case, feel free to ask and contact me if there's an area you're struggling with. I, I will be honest with you, it's not my full-time job to do, to do that, so I'm slightly, I will be a little bit limited on how many I can do, but I certainly want to try and help and support you in that respect. And if you do want to, um, if you do want me to look, help you look for roles in the new academic era and contact some of my clients about roles that might not become available and get advertised, so that you've just got an additional avenue for work, whether that be um, like longer term supply teaching roles or permanent jobs. Again, please just respond to my email and just let me know that that will be the case and I'll, I'll progress to those next steps with you if you do want to do that, okay. Um, but even if you don't want to and you just want a bit of a sounding board or anything like that moving forwards, feel, feel free to get in touch, okay. Oh, that's great. Thank okay. you. Thank you ever so much. You're welcome. No worries. Thanks very much Thank for your you. time, guys. And best of luck with everything. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Much. Take care. Bye. 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 Have a nice Thank eve. And you too. Bye.